Hey everyone, it's Joe. Welcome to today. I was just watching a video about MECFS, myalgic encephalomyelitis, or chronic fatigue syndrome, um, by Jessica Kallgren Frozard. Never know how to pronounce her last names. Um, a name's name? Anyways, so it was reminding me about how how my sickness life is very similar to lots of other people's sickness life where I be I got progressively more sick and uh, now I'm in this weird zone of I don't know if I'm going to get better or if we're going to stay sick like this forever or if it will be a thing because nobody can tell me anything because I still don't really have that I don't have doctors except one like one doctor who believes I'm sick and can treat my sickness so far but I don't have any other doctors to believe that and I don't have mental health care professionals who believe that I don't have medical people on my side about my illness they all tell me that it's in my head that it's conversion disorder that it's because of my history of trauma that it's because of just these things happen when you have poor survival skills or not that so much it's there's a different word for it, but I can't remember right now, so I have to move on. But it makes me feel this way, like, I I have to work really hard, my whole system. We work really hard to believe that we are physically sick, that there's a cause for our illnesses, that there's many causes, whatever, that it's real, and that there is a way to make our life livable. And so, like, and as long as we hold on to those things, it, it's livable. We can keep going with this huge amount of unknownness. The one doctor who believes me is a naturopath and doesn't diagnose in the same way Western doctors diagnose, and so I don't even know how to translate it back and forth and back and forth. And that's not even the point of this video. Let me take a deep breath. I'm spinning. The point is, it's it feels bad and I, ha I doubt myself every day that it's real or not real. I doubt my treatment choices and I doubt if besides my little family that I live with that I doubt if anybody will really believe or understand it. Um, and then what happens also is that because I have a hard time leaving my house because of fatigue and pain and cognitive difficulties, I have a hard time leaving my bed a lot of days also. Like, I'm just in a room with myself and my dog. She's at the park right now, but you know. And because of how creative I am and how much strength I have and bravery, I make it and I find lots of ways to keep myself feeling like I'm doing things that matter and like I'm still connecting with people but at the end of the day the people besides I li like I live with my partner and our two kids the two kids Ooh. I don't know how to talk about that but I live with I live with my little family here but then I <clears throat> um oh geez I totally lost my train of thought it's gonna come back Okay, I live here with my partner and our kids. Can I say that on the internet? Mm. Those are the people I see every day. And besides those people, I don't see people. I don't have um, I don't have friends in my city that will that come to my house and hang out with me or that help me get out of the house and hang out out of the house. Some of this is because of my own social anxieties. For a long time it was easier for me to make friends online, and so I have a lot of online friends, and I love you all. And I have other friends I made in the past, but we don't live near each other anymore. And, um, it's really lonely. It It's, like, crushingly lonely. And the way that I get through that loneliness is dissociation. I find any way to distance myself from how painful that is because I'm 
I'm not an I am not a solitary person. I like being alone and I can be alone a long time and it's really lovely. But I love people. I love friends. I love going out and doing things. I love having people just to lay in my bed with me and laugh about the ceiling. I don't know. I'm sure you all do know because most people are lonely in some way or another and having friends is really hard. And in the way our world is working now, it's a lot easier to have friends online than it is to have friends in person. Because you can connect with your online friends all day, every day. There's no limit except your own ability and time. Um, but in person friends, usually there's a lot of, it takes a lot more coordinating, a lot more effort. You have to, um, you have to really make space for each other. Otherwise you don't see each other. When I moved here, I was already getting really sick and I was trying to do school and I, I wasn't able to make friends at school that lasted outside of school. So then I fell into this weird place of like, I want I want in-person friends I think the hardest well this is such a hard video to talk about I didn't realize it was going to be so hard to talk about I would love to be able to connect even with my online friends more but honestly I can't I have lot like I lost the ability to make sense of all the different apps that messages come through on and then if I'm communicating with more than one person at a time like if there are two people messaging me or more, then I will lose track of who said what because I can't really retain it moment to moment because there's nothing except for, for these little words on a screen and maybe some emojis and I can't see my friend's face and I can't touch their hand or feel their body heat like I, I or see their body language or like hear the tones or uh, I don't understand how to keep track of what people are telling me, what my friends are telling me about their lives, when I can't re remember what they're say saying to me. It, what I don't even, I can't even get inside of the emotions of what's going on. Quite often, it just is like these words that are being exchanged, and I want them to to be able to like reach me inside. And sometimes it does reach me and it stays there because these are my friends. I love you. But often it just is this swirl of chaos in here where I can't make sense of it and I can't remember what you said and I can't remember what I said and I can't hold on to how I feel. I can't even find how I feel because you're peop that because there's no one in the room with me. It's just me and my dog and the computer screen. I, I used to think that that was better because of all the social anxiety I have, <clears throat> but now I don't think so anymore. In fact, for years and years I haven't thought so, but I don't know what to do. And what do you do when you don't know what to do, right? You Sometimes I try anything anyways. Sometimes we just sit with it and wait to see if it changes. Um, like we've been waiting to see if our health will change enough so that we can actually go out of the house to go meet people because it's hard to meet people when you have a, can't leave your house. We wanted to get involved in so many different things and we've given it efforts like even literally even just trying to go to group therapy every week or like any support group outside of the house isn't possible because we don't have the energy. We don't have the resources to get there and back with a person. We have to have a person take us places because we get lost inside of our house. And <laughs> we forget lots of things. Usually when I leave the house, I feel like I'm in Seattle and it's really hard to convince myself I'm not in Seattle. It's like I'll be in this strange place of I know it's not, that's not true. Like I can logically hold on to ish that it's probably not Seattle where I'm living, but then when I'm outside and there's sensory overload and exhaustion, fatigue, pain, then it's like my brain just, it goes to Seattle. It's the city we lived in the longest and the place we love the most. So yeah, <laughs> that's what happens. So we have to have a person to take us outside of the house on a day we could leave the house. And our 
dear partner can't always be that person because there are children involved. And so someone has to hang out with the children too. Hang out with them, watch them, parent them. It's important. It's a really complicated thing of just like, I don't even know how to like, without a person to take me somewhere, I don't know how to get to somewhere. And without a getting to somewhere where other people are, I don't know how to convince other people that I'm a friend who's worth you coming over to my house to hang out with me when I can't leave the house most of the time. Like that, uh, that feels impossible to convince people of now. Um, because we, we want to be believed about our illness and we want to be supported in our illness and we want to be somebody other than a sick person and so far we haven't found a way to connect with humans in person that that can understand all that and that want to be in our lives um Have you ever been in a place like this? Do you ever feel this way? Have you found any solutions that help you get friends in person? I'll say I hope all my friends online who will see this, I hope you understand that your friendship means the world to me and I will stay connected with you in all the ways I can figure out how. <clears throat> it's hard to know where to go from here, but that's all I have to say about that for now. Thank you for watching, listening. Believe yourself, believe yourselves. Keep living. We'll see you soon.